Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Data Cloud Now. I'm currently delighted to be joined by Mark Rind, Chief Data and Technology Officer at Pfizer. Mark, such a pleasure to be back with you here on Data Cloud Now. Absolutely, Ryan, great to be here. Thanks for having me. Let's dive in. As a global leader in financial technology, Fiserv has been at the forefront of AI implementation. Reflecting on your predictions from last year, what AI use cases are delivering the most compelling ROI for your financial institutions? We have been covering many different AI approaches, whether it be the way that we're building code within Fiserv, but really what's most fascinating is what we're being able to provide to our clients, whether that's information, across all of the data that Fiserv has, across merchants and financial institutions, to be able to come up with things like the Small Business Index, for instance, to help small businesses understand um, how they're doing and compared to others, leveraging that Fiserv data, to financial institutions to understand their portfolio of their customers. These are regional and community banks, credit unions, who now have access through our data platform um, in an aggregated fashion to be able to provide insights of how they're doing versus the market, right? To give them insights into which opportunities they should pursue, insights into their portfolios of customers, right? To give them that information quickly, easily, without meetings and bringing everyone together to try to, hey, we have to pull all this information together, right? We're being able to answer the questions directly because we have all this data at our fingertips for our customers and our clients. It's great to hear about the efficiency, Mark. How is the AI data cloud enabling Fiserv to enhance money movement for thousands of financial institutions and millions of people and businesses while maintaining security and compliance? The Fiserv treats its data um, with security to make sure our customers understand that their data is safe, it is encrypted, um, at rest. And we've also, the help of Snowflake, um, have been able to democratize that data to get it to our clients safely and securely. Um, we encrypt it, we re-encrypt it when we share it through Snowflake's very unique technology. And our clients and customers and our merchants are starting to see that value of making it easier for them to get at that data without getting a, a file transfer or a shipment of data, uh, getting it into their hands quickly so that now they can they themselves can get that data, build their own platform to answer their own very specific and unique data needs. Um, that combined with that Pfizer data advantage, we like to call it, um, that provides these aggregates of information that we're able to kind of pull together, giving the smallest customer, merchants, banks, that data leverage that even their largest competitors cannot have. Um, so that's really a very unique opportunity we have for our customers and, uh, and for Pfizer. Great to hear, Mark. How does your data monetization strategy deliver increased ROI for your customers? Well, various different ways. Um, first, it's that um, being able to provide to them their data easily, efficiently, with insights that we're able to um, provide straight out of the box, right? With having that data pulled together. The second is it's really helping them get not just at the insights, but at that data safely, quickly, but now what's really gotten interesting is to provide our customers and clients their own data platform. Right? This is not for everybody, right? This is bringing a full data warehouse, data and analytics platform and capability to small business owners, right? They don't really have that. The most they have is Excel documents that are sitting on you know, the front desk person's uh, laptop, You're up right? You're up-leveling them That's immediately. up-leveling them immediately. So we're getting them their data, getting them insights, getting them the ability to work with that data, getting them the ability to add other data that's not even Fiserv's data, right? Like let them add in third-party data or even provide access to publicly available data through the marketplace. And now all of a sudden they're able to easily connect their own data with all of this other data to provide insights and, and my hope is put them in a direction to train their own AI, right? Train their own assistants because now they have their data, that's their knowledge base, um, so that they can move their own businesses forward, their own ROI upwards um, by having these insights combined in with what happens within their four walls every day, right? That's exciting to me. It's an exciting next chapter indeed, Mark. Thank you for that. I have to say the scale that Pfizer operates is simply remarkable 
over 6 million merchant locations globally and more than 25,000 financial transactions per second. What trends are emerging in your ecosystem and how are they impacting consumers? When you talk about it that way, the, the, the scale of data, it's, it's mind boggling. It, it, it really is mind boggling. So I think you know, some of the trends is, you know, like we said before, securing it, right? right? Have to um, ensure the security, but also trends of understanding it. Like, what does this field, what does this mean? How did this get here? Where did this come from? Having that understanding of how that data is getting there, that's a, that's a trend. We're starting to see a lot and having to make sure that we can answer. But I do also think one of the trends that it has been always like for years, I've been in data for a long time, is how do I get my data mixed in with someone else's data safely? Um, because that information, whether it be, hey, I know, understand the financials on an individual. Someone else might understand the preferences of where they like to shop or what they like to buy. And context. someone else context, someone else knows you know, something else around, are they, what are they shopping for? So it's having this like knowledge network around people and what they need. That's a trend like I see just starting, right? Just starting to be able to answer questions, finding, hey, I, I have something I wanted to target for a particular user, or I'm looking for someone who might be interested in something. And whether that's through AI to be able to ask that and get some suggestions of here are some directions you can go, it's starting to get that merging of the two. Here's the data and information and the AI capabilities simply at your fingertips to be able to apply that information and knowledge the way our customers need it, not just the way I need it. I love those examples. Thank you for that, Mark. This is the year of AI implementation. In your role, what advice would you like to share with the teams looking to integrate this technology into their existing workflows? Yeah, uh, step one. Go find your legal and your compliance teams. Go speak to your lawyers. Right. Um, and by speak to them, it, you have to make them understand, help them understand what it is you're doing and what you shouldn't be doing. We built a, we call it the AI gateway, um, where anyone who's developing or working is funneling it through something that we can manage and maintain and monetize, right? And understand how we're working with it so that we understand that people aren't now just using AI to write new contracts, mm -hmm. right? Like th those are the kinds of things from a compliance standpoint, scare as they should, right. but it doesn't mean you should stop. Like you wanna have controls in place. We have an AI governance council that reviews use cases of what we wanna build and how we're using it. So as long as you have this process, right? This flow of this is being used, this is how, here are the controls, here are the monitors, here's, Here's how we're checking on the models. Here's how we're looking for, you know, things that have gone awry. Having those things in place has started to really unlock our own innovation, right? Like have the safeties on, uh, but now bring it to everyone at the company. So there's a governance use case, right. but we also have an exploration use case. Like if you have something that you want to experiment within, here's data, here are the tools. Let's see how well this does go for it, right? Register it, let's all understand what you're doing so that when it gets to that point of capability, then we can launch it on the world, right? Then we can start productizing and monetizing it. That's what's most exciting to me. It's very much that top-down approach, Mark. Yes, 100%. Now let's look towards what's next. How do you see AI reshaping the future of financial services and what innovations is Pfizer developing to stay ahead of these trends? For us, like in the financial institution, for our bank's credit union space, one of the interesting use cases we're working on is um, the ability for us to, uh, what do we call it? Get rid of the meetings. Meaning, I'll give you for instance, we always like to talk about, uh, we have a decision to make. I we love have the to, examples. Yeah, we have to go, you know, we're gonna, uh, we're thinking about these, these locations to put in new branches, or we're thinking of, you know, which product should we really market versus other? And, you know, traditionally, I would say, okay, humans are gonna make this decision. They're always gonna make the decision, right? AI is not gonna make a decision right. in that context from a strategy. But what's gonna happen next? Well, you're gonna call, call the IT guy. You're gonna call the data engineer. 
You're going to call the guy that, you know, I think some, I think Tony wrote these reports back when we used it all the we time. We got to get him involved. Let's get him involved. Let's go set up a meeting. Let's right. go have a conversation with these five different people, right? And they'll all come together and they'll all interpret it a different way and they'll go run off and it'll probably take them, you know, a couple of weeks to come back and someone's on vacation or they couldn't meet. And every, now it's three weeks later, four weeks later, and they, they come in with information and someone looks at it and goes, oh, this is wrong you know, go back or this doesn't, you know, I also want to know that. And that whole process, right, is just natural, which I would like to see someone has a question. And instead of having to have everyone run off to go get the supporting the information, meetings. Yeah, like let's, let's, let's use AI to bring it all together rather quickly. Here's a question I have. Okay, bam, here are all the reports that Tony wrote. Here's all the information you need to know about the location. Here's some outside information that you don't know about those communities, whatever that is, to have it bring the information together. So now you can have a conversation, not about this report's wrong, go run it again, but now you have the information to make a strategic decision, right? Because all of that legwork to pull it all together has led to actionable outcomes. Exactly. Exactly. So like, that's one of those use cases I'm excited about. Mark, it's always a pleasure sitting down with you. Thanks for having me, Ryan. Absolutely. Great to be here. Thank you so much for joining us. And for the audience watching, I'm Ryan Green with Data Cloud Now. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you soon.